everybody, I'm Corinne Blackstone and welcome to my craft room. I am so excited to have you here today. Before we get started, be sure to subscribe to my channel by clicking that big red subscribe button down below. I would love to have you as part of my crafty family here on YouTube. In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make this really cute spooky vibes shirt. This shirt is super easy to do and it's just all done with a simple font and some offsets. I'm going to show you how to use the extra glyphs in the font, how to get everything put together. We're going to use weld, offset, attach, group, all the things. So you're going to learn a bunch of different little things today. So if you're new to Cricut, this is a great tutorial to learn some of those new skills. And if you are a veteran to Cricut, I think you might still pick up some great tips and tricks. Now don't forget, this video is sponsored by Creative Fabrica, which means you can sign up for a all-access subscription for just a dollar for the first month and $19 a month after that at the link down below. This is just for my followers and I'm super excited about it because I love Creative Fabrica. The all-access membership allows you to download anything on their website completely free. It also includes a commercial use license, which is fantastic, meaning I could sell shirts that I make with this design. So let's go ahead over to Design Space and get started. We're going to be using some TechRap HTV for this today. So I'm going to show you how to cut that and how to press that onto the shirt because it's a little different than some other HTV products, but it is so cute, so colorful, and I cannot wait to show you how to do this. Whatever we would do, we do it just for fun. Now, of course, we're going to be using Creative Fabrica to make this super cute shirt. They have so many wonderful options for fonts and other designs. And because I'm an all access member, everything on the website is included, which is so nice. It saves me so much money. I download so much stuff from here. I probably save hundreds of dollars. So we're going to use this spooky Sunday font. And this is a newer font that I found on here. It's adorable. I think it's super, super cute. So one thing I'm going to show you is some of the fonts will show you kind of what's included when you download. So you can kind of click through these pictures. So you'll see for our uppercase letters, we just have regular fonts. But then for lowercase, we have all these really fun little glyphs that we can use to kind of design our shirt. So I'm going to go ahead and click download. And again, this font is included in all access, which don't forget you can sign up for for just $1. Um, for your first month and then $19 a month after that. So what I'm going to do is go into my desktop. Now I have everything pretty well organized going into my Cricut folder and then I have a folder dedicated to fonts and then all I'm going to do is click save. I need to open my font folder that I just downloaded. I need to click extract all and click extract and then we need to make sure that we install our font. So I'm going to right click on the font and all I'm going to do is choose install for all users. That way I can use it in any of my programs. Now it is important to remember if you have design space open when you're installing a font, you need to close it and reopen it or the font won't show up for you. Same with if you're using like wordmark.it to look at a font. If you've downloaded it, you need to close your browser and reopen. That way your browser can kind of reload the information. Let's head over to design space so we can get designing. We're going to be using Tech Wrap HTV for this, and I'm super excited to show you how I'm going to design this because you can do it too, and it's really, really easy to make a shirt or any kind of design look a little extra special when using those fonts that have those extra glyphs. So the first thing that I'm going to do is open up my text box, and I'm going to type in the text that I want to use, and I'm going to use Spooky Vibes because we're going to make this a cool little Halloween shirt. Then I want to go up to my fonts and select that. Then go to my system fonts and I'm just going to type the word spooky into my search bar at the top because it'll bring up my spooky fonts font here. Now it may take a second to load and that's totally okay. Not uncommon. I'm going to make this bigger so that we can see it really well and look how cute, but we can make it even cuter. We're going to use a program called High Logic Main Type. So what I use is a free font management program and it is by HiLogic and it's called Main Type. So I just want to select that I want to use the free edition of it because you can totally do this for free, which is fantastic. Now my fonts are all organized in alphabetical order. So we're going to scroll all the way down to spooky. So I have a lot of fonts. I'm a font hoarder, but what we'll do is we're going to find that spooky font. So we're just going to find it, which it's right here. 
And what you'll see is over on the side to the right, you'll see all of the regular characters, and these are the capital letters. But then what you're gonna see is you have other options for other characters. If you click on them, you can see them a little bit bigger down here. And you can also look in this right-hand upper corner to see what letter replaces that image. So you'll see here that I have a lowercase c if I want to replace this little skull guy. So let's head to Design Space and I'll show you how to replace that. Over here in Design Space, if I just wanna put a skull in for one of my O's, I'm gonna double click on my font, click again, and I'm gonna delete one O and I'm gonna replace it with a lowercase c. Now you'll see that I have a skull. But there's another way that you can do this as well, so let me show you that way too. Back over to High Logic main type here and find whatever pumpkin you want to use or whatever image. There's tons of different options, but I'm gonna use this kind of silly pumpkin. What you're gonna do is right click over the pumpkin and copy it to the clipboard. Head back to Design Space, and you can just use Control V to paste. Now again, it may take a second to load it, and we can just get rid of that other O because we're not gonna use that O either. Now our skull is a little bit off size, so we'll get to that in just a second but you can see that it's really easy to change any of your fonts. Now the lowercase letters are what makes these cool little designs. So I'm just typing in some random lowercase letters just to see kind of what comes up. Like this is an S, this is an A, this is a J. So there's a lot of different options here that you can use. Now I'm gonna leave vibes alone and I'm not gonna put any images in that, but I do want to make this skull larger. So in order to do that, I need to ungroup my design. So I'm gonna ungroup my letters. I'm gonna move the K and the Y over, and then I just wanna make my skull bigger so that it looks more proportioned to the pumpkin. You can move it over a little bit if you want to. You do whatever you want. There's no wrong way to make your design. You do it however you feel looks good. Then I'm gonna take the word vibes. I'm gonna move it up a little bit, and I just wanna make it a little bit bigger just so that again, it looks a little more on point with the rest of the text. Then what I wanna do is I'm gonna make sure to attach the word vibes and I wanna select my word spooky and I wanna attach that as well. The reason I'm doing this is because I want my spooky and my vibes to be centered, but I don't want them to center all the words. So it's just easier if you attach them. I'm gonna select both items I'm gonna to go to a line and then I just want to center horizontally. Now I'm usually pretty good at eyeballing where center is, so mine doesn't typically move too much, but I think that looks really good. So I'm pretty happy with that. So what I wanna do now is I'm gonna go ahead and weld this whole design because I know I wanna do some slicing and I know I wanna add some offsets. So for me, just making a weld makes my life so much easier. I have a lot less information over here on the layers panel when I weld, and it means that it's gonna hold everything in place. I don't have to think about it. I have no intention of changing this design in any way, shape, or form. The next thing that I wanna do is I'm gonna bring in a couple more characters. I wanna bring in a spider, I wanna bring in a bat, and I wanna bring in a ghost. So I'm gonna go back to my High Logic main type, and I'm first gonna find the bat that I wanna bring in, which is this little guy. So again, I'm just gonna copy him to my clipboard, and then open a new text box and paste them into design space. Just choose text, then control V, and you'll see you have your bat. Now I wanna add a ghost and a spider, so let's go find those and see what letters they are. So the little ghost I wanna use is a lowercase g, and there's a little spider that is an X, so let's go ahead and put those in over in design space. So in this text box, I'm just gonna type in a G, and an X, and that gives us those three items that we want to use, those three little designs. I'm gonna make these bigger so we can see them. Those look super cute, they're really fun, but I don't want them to be in a line. So I'm gonna ungroup them, and I want my spider to hang off of my S because I just think that'll be cute. He's a little big, so I'm gonna size him down a bit. I think that looks pretty good. Yeah, I like that. So I'm gonna select this and I'm just gonna weld it so that the spider is part of the S because I'm gonna just have him be the same color as the spooky vibes word. And then I'm gonna come in and I wanna put the bat in a different spot, but let me change his color just so we can see him a little bit better. I wanna put this bat up here, kind of over the S. But you'll notice that my words are in front of my bat, which makes it a little hard to determine where I wanna put him. Select your font right click on it and click send to back. That's gonna send it behind all the other pieces. 
I'm gonna size my bat down a little bit, zhuzh him a little, kind of figure out where I wanna sit him to see kind of what I want him to look like. I think that looks pretty good. So then we wanna do the same thing with the ghost. Again, I'm just gonna change his color and I'm gonna put him over here in the S. Uh, maybe make him a little smaller. And you just sort of play with him, figure kind of how you want him to sit. There's no right or wrong way to do this. So now that I'm happy with this design, I think it looks really cute. I like it a lot and I'm gonna go ahead and go with this. But I wanna do a small offset behind it. I wanna do some other little things to kind of just make it a little more extra special. So the first thing I'm gonna do is add an offset to my spooky vibes. I'm gonna click on offset and I wanna do pretty thin offset. So I'm gonna try a 0.1 and just see what I think about that size of an offset. I think that's about what I want to do. I think that looks really good. So I'm going to click apply. I think that looks super duper duper cute and I really like it, except that I'd really like to fill in the holes with the faces. So if you have spots in your offset that you want to fill in, all you need to do is go to contour, which is in the lower right hand corner, click on that and it's going to bring up the image. Click on the spots that you want to hide. You'll notice that they turn a darker gray. I just don't want those spots to cut out of my offset. I think it just looks a little bit better. Now, I'm gonna do something a little bit different that I think will make the bat and the ghost look extra cute. I'm gonna add a little offset to these guys and I'm gonna show you how to make it look really cool. So what we're gonna do is we're going to do an offset and I think for these I wanna go just a little bit smaller. I'm gonna go like 0.07 because I don't want a big offset on them. I want it to be really, really thin. I think that looks super cute. So then I wanna go ahead and I'm gonna do the same thing for the ghost. So I'm gonna click offset and then click apply. But the key is I don't wanna to have to layer two layers of black on top of each other cause that just seems like a lot of work and I just don't wanna do that. So I know I'm gonna cut the spooky in orange so I'm just gonna change the color really quick just so we get a better look at how this design is going to look you know, all together. So now that I'm really happy with the way that looks, I want to make sure that I don't have a whole bunch of layers over these like edges because this would technically be four layers. It'd be the ghost, the offset for the ghost, the letters, and then the letter offset. So in order to prevent too much of like a crazy offsetty too many layers thing, I want to slice the offset out of this orange section. That way it gives us a little bit more space. It's gonna not have so many layers and it's just gonna look really good. So what I need to do is select the offset of my ghost and the orange section of my letters. Then I want to click on slice. Now you're gonna end up with some kind of weird sections and I'll pull them apart a little bit so you can see because there's just certain things that we need to get rid of. Now slice can take a couple seconds to really do its thing. So just give it a second if it didn't do exactly what you wanted it to. So now what you'll see is you've got a couple pieces and I'm just gonna use my mouse and you'll see we have this weird kind of black like crescenty shape. We don't need that, you can delete it. You also have this weird orange crescenty shape and we also don't need that, so we're gonna delete that as well. Now, before you do anything else, you don't wanna move anything. You wanna select your slice result. You wanna select your weld result offset, so the black section, and you want to click on the word weld. What that's gonna do is it's going to add your offset from your ghost to your offset for your words, which is exactly what we want it to do. So I'm gonna go ahead and right click on this and I'm gonna send this backwards and I'm gonna move the ghost up just so you can see it better. So now that's all one piece. So we need to do the same thing for the bat. So what you wanna do is select the bat text offset and the orange and click slice again. Once it slices, we're gonna delete those little extra parts. So you're gonna delete this little nub right here and this little nub. Then you wanna select your black bat and your black offset and you wanna click weld. Again, that's gonna make it all one piece. So now that everything is in its own pieces, I can show you exactly what it's going to look like when it cuts. Do you see how the bat and the ghost now are part of our offset? So much easier, way less layering, and a lot easier to do. 
So I'm just going to send this to the back again and we'll kind of play with it, get it back lined up pretty good. It doesn't have to be perfect because now we want to size this to fit our shirt. So I'm going to size this for an adult large shirt and I didn't mean to drag that so far down. So I don't want to go any bigger than probably about nine and a half, nine and three quarters at the largest. So what you want to do is make sure you have everything selected. You need to select everything at the same time when you resize. So I'm going to resize this down and we're going to go like nine, let's go like 9.6 ish, somewhere in there. That's a pretty good size. Now we're cutting this on HTV, so it's really important that we mirror it. Now I don't like to mirror it on the make it screen. I don't trust Cricut and 10 times out of 10, I forget. So I like to flip it on my make it screen, like right here on the canvas. So if you go up to flip and you choose flip horizontal, check that out. It's mirrored. So it's ready to go, ready to cut, and it's super easy. You can save it from here before you hit make it. I would highly recommend doing that because you don't want to lose any of your work. So I'm going to call this spooky vibes shirt and click save. Then all we have to do is click make it and I'll show you what that looks like as soon as this finishes saving. When you go to click make it, now what you'll see, and we're going to actually cut the bat and the ghost in white, not purple, but what you'll see here is you've got your black offset, your orange words, and then the purple and, and um, purple ghosts and bat. But I'm going to cut those in white, so don't worry. Now we're using TechWrap HTV. Now I would recommend doing test cuts on your machine before cutting this. I cut this on the everyday iron-on setting with less pressure and it works fine for my machine, but you're gonna wanna do a test cut on yours just to see if that pressure works for you or not. So let's head over to the Cricut and we're gonna get this all cut out. I'm super excited to see how this turns out. So I've just got a little scrap for the white. This is some I had left over from another project that I did. But with HTV, you always want to make sure that you're putting it carrier sheet side down, which is typically going to be the clear carrier sheet. It's like sticky on one side. If you ever question it, just peel the corner of your vinyl. Then I'm just going to cut this in the orange and the black, and then I'll get everything weeded out, and then we'll be ready to press. So I like to dry fit my design and I just dry fit it on the table first just to get everything laid in place. And then I can take it over to the shirt once it's on the heat press and figure out where it needs to sit on the shirt. I prefer to do it on the heat press versus off because I find that I then don't accidentally shift the design. So I usually just try to get my shirt centered on my press and then I just use the edges of my collar to straighten my design, you wanna go about three fingers down from the collar. I think that looks pretty good. So I'm gonna take off the top layers, which are the white of the ghost and the bat. Take those off. Because we're gonna press this in three layers. So you're gonna do black, then white, or then orange, then white. I could do the white first, but I prefer to do the orange. So once everything's there, I'm gonna set these ones off to the side. I'm gonna finish letting my heat press set up and get heated, and then I'm just gonna check this one more time just to make sure that it looks good. Looks straight. Looks good to me, so we'll let this sit. This gets pressed at 285 degrees for 12 seconds. But because we are layering, we will need to do slightly shorter presses. So we'll just press the first layer for a few seconds, the second layer for a few seconds, and then we'll do a full press on the last layer.
Okay, we're ready to press our first layer. So like I said, we just pressed this one for just a few seconds. I am using a medium pressure for this. So that's something you wanna keep in mind as well. And this is a warm peel product. So as soon as you've pressed, you can remove your carrier sheet so that you can add your next layer. Now I do like to let my layer cool down a little bit before I add that next one because that can help prevent any bubbling or lifting or any damage to the under layer of the next layer. So I'm gonna let this cool down just a little bit and then we'll add the orange. Now that I've let that cool, I only let it cool for about a minute. I'm gonna let, add the next layer. Now do keep in mind that there's a reason that we just press for just a few seconds. It's because HTV can shrink. And I actually just noticed before we go any further, I missed a little spot in weeding. So I'm just gonna grab that really quick. I just missed a little circle on the pumpkin. That happens. That's why I like to do a couple checks and I always look before I press. I missed another spot. I just realized I missed the skull's nose. See, this is why we do things. We're just gonna grab that. So it's okay if you miss something, just make sure you check before you put it down. So, and commit. But that's why I like to do kind of a dry fit and then I fit it again on the shirt and before I press, I always give it a good once over. Now I just wanna move the Y a little bit. Just wanna kind of zhuzh that. That looks pretty good. So again, we're gonna go ahead and just give this a quick couple second press. You don't want to go too crazy. Just a few seconds will do. And then I'm going to go ahead and remove. And again, I'm going to allow this to cool for just about a minute or so. And then we can place our white pieces. Now that we've let this cool for just a few moments, you can lay your white pieces down and figure out where you need those to go. He needs to move over just a little. He looks good. And then I'm gonna lay my bat down. Now I get the question all the time, don't you burn yourself because your tray doesn't pull out? I've never ever burned myself on my heat press. There's plenty of space between the press and the shirt to fit my arms under, so it's no big deal. Now it is optional. You do not have to put this carrier sheet back over anything because I do have a um, Teflon sheet, but I'm just gonna do it to hopefully prevent too many lines. So this press will be for a full press. So this is gonna be done for that full 12 second press. Again, with a medium to firm pressure, and that way it's fully pressed, good to go. Now, I don't usually let my heat press beep because it's very loud, very distracting. My pets cannot stand it, so I don't typically allow it to do a full beep. So now all you gotta do is take off your carrier sheets, and your design is good to go. I'll get this out and show it to you guys. So here's the shirt all finished. I wanted to show it to you on because I wanted to show you that the tech wrap vinyl lays really, really nicely, especially on a shirt. I used three colors. I used an orange, a black, and a white. I'll link everything that I used down below for you, including the font and everything. That way you can enjoy this fun shirt as well. You saw how easy this was to put together and I really had a good time. I hope you learned a few skills, tips, and tricks here with using this font, with those extra little glyphs. It's a super fun way to really jazz up any kind of font that you may have. Now don't forget you can sign up for that $1 subscription for the first month at Creative Fabrica at the link down below, and then it's just $19 a month after that, and you can cancel at any time. I don't think you're going to want to though. Once you've started using the All Access and seeing all the things that it includes and checking out all of the classes and things that are offered. Now, be sure to check out those links down below so that you can get this awesome, fun HTV from TechRap and check out that $1 subscription. I hope you guys had a fun time. I hope you picked up some tips and tricks. As always, have a wonderful day and happy crafting.